Okay, now I'm going to solve an example to illustrate how to apply these steps. So the example is actually what I established at the beginning of this particular chapter. The example reads, consider the drag force on an object with a characteristic length of L moving slowly at a velocity V through air. The drag force also depends on the viscosity and the density of air. Okay, so by reading the question, I can obtain the first step. Okay, so that is the drag force is a function of L, some velocity, viscosity and density. So the first step can be established by reading the problem carefully. Okay, this is identifying the K parameters. The second is expressing each of these parameters in terms of MLT and FLT. So in here I have, a I have an opportunity to pick whichever I want. I can go with MLT, I can go with FLT as well. Okay, so in this one I will go at MLT. Okay, so the drag force is basically it's a force and I did this in the previous session so I'm not going to repeat my approach but it is MLT minus 2 is the unit of it. Okay, or rather the dimensions of it. So this L will be, well, length, right? Um, the velocity will be L T minus 1. Okay. Note that this L and V is not a function of M or F. So whether I'm using MLT or FLT system, I still get the same units. Okay. Viscosity. From the introductory concepts, I know that the shear stress is a function of viscosity times the rate of change of velocity in the perpendicular direction to the flow. Right? So I can use this and obtain the dimension of viscosity. Okay. The shear stress is basically, if you think about the size of Pascal, right? So it is force divided by area. I have the force over there, so it's going to be m l minus 1 t minus 2. Okay. And this will be equal to the viscosity, the unit of viscosity or the dimension of viscosity that I'm interested in, times this du, first of all the mathematical symbols, doesn't have any units, right? Um, U is L T minus 1, right? And Y is L. So if you look over here, L's cancel, so I get myself T minus 1, and basically you can see this becomes T minus 1. So I get myself M L minus 1, T minus 1. Okay, so if you do not know the dimension of a particular parameter, you can obtain yourself as long as you know an equation and I use the dimensional homogeneity to find my unit, okay? And density, as we establish, is m, l, minus 3, okay? Step number 3 is, asks me, as you can see up here, is identifying the R value. So when I look at the combination of this, you can see right off the bat from the force, I do get myself m, l, t. So then in the third step, my R will be equal to 3, and obviously there will be m, l, and t. Okay, now the fourth step is the critical step. Okay, so I'm going to select R, which is three, parameters. And these will be the repeating par variables. Okay, um, so okay, which three should I choose? Okay, my recommendation is do not pick the left hand side. So the left hand side in this particular case is FD. Do not pick the FD into the left hand side of the equation. At this point, it's mathematically okay to include FD or the left hand side parameter, but it will be a challenge in the second half of this um, approach that you will see, okay? So take that out. FD is not one of the ones that I would like you to take, okay? And as this question is fairly basic, you can't really make a mistake in terms of taking, picking L, V, viscosity, and density. So whatever you pick will be fine, okay? And I will solve a question in the upcoming session where you will be able to make a mistake and I will illustrate and discuss in more detail, okay? So I will go ahead and select, let's say, density, some length, and velocity, right? Okay, you remember that there are two caveats I don't want to fall into, right? The density has m, l, minus 3, right, the units. L has length, Neither of these two has t in it. So the last term must have a t in it, right? And if I look at the velocity, I have l t minus 1. So basically, as a combination of these three parameters, all the basic dimensions are expressed. That's the caveat number one. Caveat number two is, as I mentioned in my previous session, I do not want the same parameter repeated. If I have a density 1 and density 2, I don't want to repeat it, but that's not the case in this problem anyways. So that will be fine. Okay, 
And then the fifth step, what I do is I basically form my pi terms by establishing these row L and V, those are the repeating variables, and I'll add one more parameter to it, okay? And I recommend and I highly encourage you to pick the left-hand side parameter in terms of the first pi term. Again, it doesn't make a difference now, it will, okay? So now I obtain my pi one. I will show you how to obtain from this to the pi terms, okay? But before we get carried away, I will look at the sixth step, and it tells me that I need to repeat this Step number five, k minus r minus one times, okay? k is five, r is three, minus one is one. So I need to repeat this process one more time. And I will get myself, as the name suggests, this is repeating variables. So that's why they are repeated, draw l and v. And let's look at what I have not accounted for. And this is a good step to check whether you're making any mistakes. When I look at my equation over here, you can see fd, Okay, that's represented in the first pi term. L represented in both pi terms because it's a repeating variable. Same thing for velocity. And viscosity has not been accounted yet. So I'm going to go simply go ahead and put the viscosity over here. And I'll, I'll underline it. And I'll look at the density. Density is in both. So you can see every single parameter is underlined. So that has been accounted for. So I should be good to go. Okay, so let's now go back to the earlier question that I asked. How am I going to obtain these F, D, Rho, L, V combination as a non-dimensional parameter. There are multiple methods for that, and I will go over them one by one. The first method is the most fundamental method of finding these, and I will go over this now, okay? So basically what I'm saying is pi one is a function of F, D, okay, times the density times L times V, and there's the power to these, I don't know it, okay? First thing is F, D to the power, I'm gonna leave that as one, the reason is that I really don't care about the FD square or square root of F or cube of FD, right? I care about the first order, FD. So I'm going to leave that alone. Second one, I'm going to call this density to the power of A, length to the power of B, and the velocity to the power of C. Again, my goal is to obtain these ABC values so that I can establish myself a pi value, okay? Now, what I'm going to do in this step is actually I'm going to insert the dimensions of FD, density, length, and V inside this equation. So let's just go ahead and do it. As we discussed, FD is MLT minus 2 to the power of 1. Density is ML minus 3 to the power of A. L to the power of B. LT minus 1 to the power of C. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do here is actually I will I want to have them like this m to the power of something l to the power of something and t to the power of something okay so I will go back to my mathematics as you can see here I have an m to the power of 1 and I have a m to the power of a right and I don't have it in the last so basically what this becomes is 1 plus a okay let's look at the length typically length will have more terms because it's a very common parameter l is I have it over here, 1 plus, let's look at the L, so that's going to be, in fact, a minus 3A, right, plus B plus C, right, when you look at the time, it's going to have minus 2, minus C. Next step is to see what it should be, if you remember, this M should be to the power of 0, L to the power of 0, T to the power of 0, because the pi terms is non-dimensional. If you note that if I have L to the power of 1, the other two are 0, then what will happen is the unit will be length. I don't want the whole approach is to obtain a non-dimensional term. So from that reason, you will see that I will obtain 1 plus A is equal to 0, 1 minus 3A plus B plus C is equal to 0, and minus 2 minus C is equal to 0 as well. Okay, and if I go ahead, I can simplify my a as minus 1, and I can obtain c as minus 2. If I use the second equation, then I'm going to have 1 minus minus 3 becomes plus 3, plus b, which is the question that I'm having, minus 2 is equal to 0. 
and you can see from here that it's going to be 4 minus 2 is 2 so I will get myself a b of minus 2 so I have established all these three a b c values so if I go up here I will insert this over here a b and c okay so the my pi term then becomes f d right times density to the power of 1 right because that's what my so my pi terms becomes f so my term pi terms becomes f d density to the power of minus 1 because a is minus 1 l L to the power of minus 2 and velocity to the power of so minus from two. here my pi 1 will be F D divided by density length square times velocity square actually I recommend that you double check your calculation this way okay from step number 1 and 2 you have this F D expressed as M L t minus 2 then density is m l minus 3 length is length velocity is l t minus 1 square I have mass on the numerator and I have m in the denominator as well so they cancel let's look at the time you can see t minus 2 up here denominator has t minus 2 because there's a t minus 1 to the power of 2 is t minus 2 right let's look at the l on the numerator I have L on the denominator I have L minus 3 plus 2 which becomes L minus 1 plus another 2 L so everything cancels out and you can see that this is a non-dimensional term okay okay now I'm gonna find the second pi term okay we find the first pi term the second pi term will be obtained by having viscosity density length and vis velocity okay so you can go through the same process if you would like to that we established over here you can call it viscosity to the power of 1 density to the power of a length to the power of b velocity to the power of c and go through this whole analysis okay or there's an alternative approach in here okay there are commonly used non-dimensional number in fluid mechanics okay and i have an, another video on this okay i'd like you to visit that as well okay one of the commonly used uh, numbers, non-dimensional numbers, uh, is called Reynolds number. Okay, rho v, some kind of a distance, or it can be diameter, divided by the viscosity. Okay, and if you look at my symbol, so you can see over here, okay, viscosity is right over here. The density is right up here, right? The velocity is here, right? And this is length or diameter typically it's written as d dh the hydraulic diameter okay but it doesn't matter the units or rather the dimensions are the same right so you can see here I can actually now recognize that this is gonna be end up with the Reynolds number if you do put viscosity to the power of 1 that's the power of a L to the power of B velocity to the power of C you will obtain actually the inverse of this equation you're gonna obtain viscosity divided by density velocity length but that's quite all right okay the goal is to obtain a non-dimensional number okay all right so then let me write it over here my pi 2 will be equal to Reynolds number okay now at the end my pi 1 will be a function of the way that we approach this is going to be function of pi 2 so then fd divided by rho l square v square will be a function of the Reynolds number okay let me show you the advantage of going through this process okay so let's say that we have an axis over here um, in the x-axis I'm gonna call this pi 2 which is the Reynolds number and over here I'm gonna do this fd divided by rho l square v square right so then if I want to do an experiment to obtain this I will get just get one particular curve okay I'm obviously uh, arbitrarily drawing a curve over here let's say it will end up like this I'm gonna obtain my experimental points I'm gonna do a best curve fit and I will obtain this curve right 
Okay, so then I will be kind of done. However, if you look at this original starting point of this equation, you had this L, V, viscosity and density, right? So if I want to plot, there will be FT as a function of L. Remember, when you're doing L, all the rest needs to be constant. So your V, viscosity and density is constant, are constant, and you're just sending the L and obtaining a particular line, right? Let's say you're getting this, right? But then you have to repeat this analysis for all these variables. You can, you must do this for the velocity, okay? Um, not only that, so you can see that I need to have one, two, three, four different, uh, I have to do four times of the work in order to obtain the same thing that I obtained by having one curve, right? So that's the power of pi, pi. That's the power of this analysis, okay? The other thing that I would like you to bring to your attention is that let's say that I want to obtain this particular curve and remember that the density is constant right um, velocity is constant and the length is constant okay so if you think about it from the real application point of view length constant is an easy one right and the velocity is constant is an easy one as well but how about this note that I'm changing my viscosity on the other hand keeping my density constant, okay? So that's quite a challenge because sometimes when I change the density, the viscosity changes and etc. So they're like a pair, okay? So this pi term terminology approach, I don't have to deal with it. I just simply have one curve that I have over here and I don't, I can change in the Reynolds number when you look at the Reynolds number over here. For instance, in order to increase my Reynolds number, I can keep my density constant. I can keep my viscosity constant. If I want, I, I have, can keep my length of the model is constant, I simply increase the velocity. Okay.